morning everyone, my name is Ping Yang. I don't have a very um, difficult name to remember, so you can call me B Y L E E by Lee, which is the initials of my name followed by my surname. And this name is also the name that appears on my army uniform. So today, the topic that I'll be talking on is Are uh, Drones Really Worth It? A Perspective by Lee. There are two keywords in this topic one is drone, and the other one is perspective. And since we are talking about these two topics, uh, let me introduce myself from my point of view and other people's point of view. Alright, my journey as a drone pilot started in January 2018. I was on a diving trip with my cousin and I was being introduced to his drone. And there was this instant connection between me and the drone, just like how a five-year-old kid would be instantly attracted to an iPad. And that was love at first sight for me. And six months later, my logical side of my brain and my emotional side of my brain was telling me to go for it. So I bought it for $1,500. And since then, um, my drone has been my beloved travel companion. And till today, I've been flying it for around 15 times. And I'm pretty sure that this number would be very much higher if not for COVID. My mom, on the other hand, is back to defer. And she's a nagging mom. Not your head if you have a mom that nags. I see a few subtle mums here and there. So um, you add all the mums here, that's my mum. So she will be like, going, how come you buy so much, so, so expensive? You look at the piano that you buy, that time it has been collecting dust in the storeroom, blah, 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 blah. Basically, she's not impressed and she thinks that my relationship with the drone is just a one night stand. <laughs> my friends, on the other hand, thinks that I have a very cool hobby. But I think I do get some very interesting questions. For example, one of my friends says, Do you know that so and so from marketing department, you know, he bought a drone? And then the drone went higher and higher, it became smaller and smaller, then you realize that he lost his drone. So the question over here is Are drones really stable? Are drones easy to operate? And I do get one more very cheeky question. He says that, um, Ping Yang, what drone hobby? Don't bluff. You use it for your peeping Tom hobby, right? Uh, uh, you bring your drone to the beach and then you pay watch, right? I was literally rolling my eyes at him. But at this point in time, I don't know if you think that a drone is a useful drone or a harmful drone. But before you come into any conclusion, let me finish my TED talk. And I would like to keep start off with this story called The Blind Touches the Elephant. So the characters of this story is six blind men and one elephant. The task was for the blind man to describe what an elephant is based on their sense of touch. So the first blind man touches the spear, uh, sorry, the tusk of the elephant, and he says, an elephant is a spear. The other blind man touches the trunk of the elephant, and he says that an elephant is a snake. So one after another, an elephant is a fan, an elephant is a tree, is a wall, is a rope. Nobody wants to be the blind man in this story. But how sure are you that you have seen things from different perspectives? Let us play a game to find out, and this game is called Guess Where. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll show you an aerial image that I took online, and then if you can guess where the place is, then I have some mentor suites for you. <laughs> so, first one, where is this? I'll give you a hint that this is in NTU, and it's the first building that you will come across when you take past 179. It's the hall starting with a P and a C. Yeah, okay. So that's Okay, so this is uh, how it looks like on the ground. And every time I pass by this place, what I'll notice is that it's actually built partially on land and built partially on water. But it's only when I see this aerial image that I realize that the buildings are wide shape. Okay, next move on to the next one. Where is this place? A hint will be it's also in Marriage. Oh, sorry, in, in Singapore, <laughs> one of the reservoirs known as the N. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. I just have to say that uh, this place brings back a lot of memories because as a kid, I would always like to go onto this bridge. And this is how it looks like on the land. And every time I go to this bridge, uh, I will be able to see the tortoises and the fishes in the waters. But when I look at this aerial image, as an engineer, I was like thinking, say, how come the architect make people work the extra mile? And out of curiosity, I went on to Google, and I Googled zigzag bridges, and apparently this has something to do with feng shui. And it says that it's said to slow down evil spirits. 
And what I remember is, what I immediately thought of is that good old Hong Kong movies, you remember the vampires, they will stick out their hand, they will jump one step forward, <laughs> jump one step forward, in order for it to change direction, they have to change on the spot. So it's somehow related to feng shui. So I have no idea whether it's really related to feng shui, or is it because they have just additional budget. But what I do know is that a change in perspective triggered me to think further, and it has also expanded my repertoire of stories. So let me look at another set of pictures. This time around is done in Bandung, Indonesia, in this place called the Stone Garden. So this place is actually filled with stones and rocks that are about one meter tall to maybe as tall as this, as high as this seminar room. So this is the image of how it actually looks like on the ground versus from the throne. It's a very different perspective. And when I was there, the guy asked me, he said, Bingyang, do you believe that this place was once filled with water because they found marine fossils in the rocks? And at that point in time, I was starting to say, uh, no, I have no idea, very hard to imagine because, you know, Bandung is about 700 meters above sea level. But later on, during that night, I was looking at the aerial image and I thought to myself, hey, doesn't this look something like what I will see during my diving trip? And I went from, I don't know, to, hey, maybe that's possible. So once again, it, I, I have no idea whether this place was once filled with water, but a change in perspective. I went to see things from a different view, triggers me to think further. And I just want to say that the drone not only allows me to see the environment, to see this world from a different view, but it also allows me to see myself from a different view. And to my horror, this is what I saw. So, I just have to say, okay, um, apparently I'm not going to put my aerial image over here for obvious reasons. And then, uh, that big patch over there wasn't that big, even though it's um, still viewable from the nest of the drone. So, uh, maybe the lasers are wondering what's the big fuss about, right? Just, like, just let me just say that, um, from a guy's point of view, getting a few weight here and there, no big deal. But uh, losing hair uh, is a different story. 90% of the men looks uglier without hair. Um, trust me on that, I've been to the army, I've seen it enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thankfully, I managed to realize my problem early, take corrective actions, and therefore, uh, the situation is under control right now. All right. So, this is the reason why I strongly believe that a change in perspective, uh, which is due to the drone, allows me to see things from different perspective. At the same time, uh, it triggers me to think further, it expanded my repertoire of stories, and yes, it helped me to it saved me from hair loss. Okay, let's move on to the next part uh, on the question of whether a drone is stable and whether it is difficult to operate. So this is baby Ethan, and this is how he actually looks like when I present him his new toy class. And if you are as curious as baby Ethan to know what actually happened, let me tell you what happened on my first maiden flight. Okay. One day before my first maiden flight, I double checked everything. I checked that the batteries were fully um, charged. The software was updated. The weather was good. And then um, heaven was on my side. And I also went to um, Google Maps to take a look at a few of the terrain. And then I make plan A, plan B, contingency plan. You know, um, it's $1,500 after all. So uh, I just want to make sure that I'm everything checked. And then I also make plans that say if this thing, if this deployment ground doesn't work, where's the next alternative de deployment ground? So on the day of the flight, I realized I made a mistake. Uh, and that was, it's actually a Saturday, and the place is actually filled with people. So that's actually a very bad news for a drone pilot, because it's like flying a helicopter, you need space for it to um, fly, you need space for it to land. Um, but fortunately, I will tell you, if a guy can manage to solve the problem, and this is what the drone saw. Alright, so I'll need some time to double check that my drone is okay. But I'll be bearing that. Let me show you another video of. <laughs> This, this one is the Stone Garden video, right? Here I am where the movie started. There's a matter for the Space Street flies through the skies and battles happen every week. Okay, 
Okay, so the video switch for itself is very stable. And I'm just very impressed at how stable this thing, considering that my drone is only 500 grams. Oh. So, okay. So when you purchase a drone, it actually comes in two parts. The drone itself and the remote control. So now I'm going to do a demo um, on how to fly this thing with the remote control. Right? Okay, so when I try to shift the thing, this thing will fly, and then the other one will control the movement. <laughs> Say, hey, 
my journal has been sitting in the storm collecting dust during the COVID-19 period. So, um, will you guys like to do a photo shoot using Jujut? <coughs> and without skipping a bit, they said yes. So we have plans to go to Pandan Reservoir. And then, um, if everything goes well, we'll be bringing the, the drones to Clementi Forest. Okay, so um, that's the end of my presentation. And um, if you'd like to see the, this road through the lens of a drone, but you're still being put off by the high price of the drone, my humble advice is to rent one. There are plenty of options out there. And in the case you have a boyfriend or husband who is losing half of his time, <laughs> don't be that nagging mother. Get him a drone and let it see for itself. <laughs> right, uh, that's my email. If you have any kind of questions, you can drop me an email. And this presentation is brought to you by Lee. Thank you.